If you've seen my history of rock 80s doc, you'll know I am not a fan of the late 80s. It was such a slap in the face to the original decades. Show you a slap in the face! I had a big argument with the other guy over the overblown production and gimmicky nature of MTV, and things got a little heated between us. In the cusp of 1987 and 1988, somewhere between Tiffany's I Think We're Alone Now and Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up, well, for once that Rick Roll clip is actually relevant. MTV played a cover of Rudy Clark's Got My Mind Set On You, sung by none other than George Harrison. I got my mind set on you. Oh, hell yeah! Now we're talking! This song is instantly better than the entire Gone Tropo album combined. <sighs> well, as you can see, the other other guy wanted to join in on this one as well. But hopefully we won't have any more interruptions. Oh man! I got my mind set on you! I love this song! I got my mind set on you! Wait, who's that? My neighbor. Also from my History of Rock series. And what's up with the Miss Clean routine? Oh, this? I got a letter in the mail today and I had to disinfect the entire apartment, you know. Okay. The song was such a fun, upbeat number that even George got up and danced in the video. Um, pretty sure that's a stunt double. It would become George's third number one single, the last number one for any of the Beatles. Yep, even that song Paul did with Kanye West didn't reach number one. I've got my mind on you. I've got my mind on Following the single was the much-anticipated Cloud Nine album, where George even posed with his old Gretsch duo jet. And that first single was not a fluke. This would indeed be his best album since the early records. Maybe even his best since All Things Must Pass. Well, you got me hooked, so I want to listen too. All right, well, let's get a little history out of the way. I'm going to do an album next year, which I haven't done an album for a couple of years. George had really focused making movies, occasionally writing a song for them. Yeah, in fact, a couple of songs from Cloud Nine, like Someplace Else, came from a movie he produced called Shanghai Surprise, which I've never heard of. Shanghai Surprise was a film starring Madonna, which was a huge flop. Oh, God, all you ever do is bash Madonna. I do not. Dude, I hear you whining about her all the time. I mean, I literally hear every word you're saying. Our walls are paper thin. Every word? Speaking of someplace else, I really like this ballad a lot. Great slide playing all around. I don't know. This one's not really doing it for me. I mean, it really needs to go somewhere else musically, don't you think? It needs to go someplace else. Huh? See what I did there? No? Cool. I think it's common knowledge that George teamed up with Jeff Lynn from Electric Light Orchestra to produce this record. Oh, I love me some ELO. And that was a fantastic opportunity for me. I had a marvelous time producing and working with George. And you can really hear his touch all over it. For whatever reason, Jeff just knew how to get the right sound out of George. He's got me to perform better, and at the same time, I've had somebody to bounce ideas off. There are some contemporary synths and production all over it, but they're done sparingly, letting George's guitar and Ringo and Jim Keltner's drums come center stage. Even Eric Clapton returns, and you can hear him and George's dueling guitars on the opening title track, which just cooks. Friends Elton John and Jim Horton also make an appearance here. I gotta say I love the opening track. Not only the guitar work, but the horns as well. It's got a bluesy feel to it, but the lyrics feel a lot more optimistic. And I'll see you there. Same with the follow-up track, That's What It Takes, which is my personal favorite from this album. George's voice is filled with passion again, and I gotta say the lyrical content really hits home given the current state of the world. The closer I get into that open door, I gotta be sure if that's what it takes. The Eric Clapton solo at the end is my favorite on the album, very reminiscent of a lot of his great guitar work from Behind the Sun or August. I even enjoy the synth textures used here. It gives the song some contemporary dynamics without sounding too dated. We're only two songs into this album, and already it's the best sounding record since 33 and a third. Well, I definitely like the guitar work on this one. Fish on the Sand definitely starts off with a cool riff. 
Yeah, George actually busted out his Rickenbacker 12 string for the first time in years. Rick of the Hesperus also has some fun bluesy guitar lines and horns all over it. It sounds to me at least like it's George just making fun of himself. I'm not a wreck yet. <laughs> I can say the same thing about Devil's Radio. Yeah, that's another one of those songs where George vents his frustration with the music industry. But unlike the previous two albums, this is much more upbeat and tongue-in-cheek. Well, that's what you think, man, but I know the truth behind this song. It's all about the rise of the cable news networks that come many years later. Your MSNBCs, your Fox News, and not only that, but this song is a warning about the Illuminati. Are you on drugs? I'm listening to a George Harrison album. What do you think? Okay. Uh, another favorite of mine is This Is Love. This is love. You know, this song kind of has a Cure vibe to it, and the slide guitar playing is really memorable. It bounces right from the get-go. Well, I also like that the video is just shots of George while on vacation in Hawaii. It also features more of George's philosophy in the lyrics. Since our problems have been our own creation. It's very reminiscent of a lyric like, with every mistake we must surely be learning from While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Speaking of which, one of the most famous songs is When We Was Fab, where George reminisces about his Beatle days. In the video, Ringo even makes an appearance. You couldn't make an ex-Beatle record without having Ringo. Along with the walrus. The microscopes that magnified the tears. Yeah, it definitely has that I am the walrus feel to it. I don't know, it kind of sounds like a poor man's attempt to sound like the Beatles. But it is the Beatles! No, it's not! It's got two out of three surviving members in it! It's the well, Beatles! Well, it's not all of them, so no, it's not! Guys, 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 it's okay! You're both wrong! Actually, my favorite part of the tune is the ending, where George's sitar gets a cameo. I've heard people say that this is the album where George embraced his Beatle past and allowed it to seep into the sessions, but I feel like this is a culmination of all his work. So, I hate to break up the George Harrison worship hour and all, but I have big problems with two songs. I really don't like Just For Today. It's a boring song that kind of makes me want to slit my wrists. Really? Listening to Nirvana in the 90s video didn't make you want to do that? I don't know. It's just different when you're listening to the beautifully tormented soul of Kurt Cobain. Just For Today feels like a song that could have been on Living in the Material World, though to be honest, this is one of the weaker songs on the album. Breath Away From Heaven is my other grave. Yeah, out of anything, this song's my least favorite. It also came from Shanghai Surprise and should have just stayed background music for it, whatever the hell Madonna is doing in the movie. Hey, don't you start the Madonna bashing too. I do tend to skip these two on my playthroughs, but I'd certainly rather listen to them than the worst of Gontrapa or Extra Texture. Building to the climax of Got My Mind Set On You, Cloud9 was touted as George's best record since all things must pass. It's definitely a solid, dynamic collection of gems without too many hiccups in the playing order. And even the lesser songs break up the upbeat numbers to make them stand out more. Cloud9 may not have anything quite as thought-provoking as Beware of Darkness or as spiritually uplifting as My Sweet Lord, but like I said, that's what it takes is like the album's own version of My Sweet Lord while being so radically different. It really has been quite a journey to go from the 1970 album to this one from 1987, and the last record released during George's lifetime. This is definitely a much better album than Gontrapo. It sounds like there's some actual care and passion put into it. I guess George really needed that five-year hiatus just to get his creative juices flowing again. You know, to be honest, I'm not an expert on George's music or anything, but the first time I listened to it, I didn't really like it that much. But after reading a bit about it and knowing that Eric Clapton's playing those cool guitar lines, and then going through it with these two, I did actually warm up to it. It was kind of cool in the end. And once again, here's Todd Meredith with his thoughts on the album. Hey, JT. Okay, so George Harrison's Cloud Nine. I gotta say, I wasn't a huge fan of the album on first listen. I just couldn't get past some of the 80s, schlocky, cheesy production elements. This Is Love definitely falls victim to that. But on my second and third listen, I realized that this was really a finely crafted pop rock album with great flow and some really quality guitar playing on it. The title track, Cloud Nine, man, George is getting sexy on this song. 
an element of George they had never seen before. I love Fish in the Sand, Devil's Radio. Even when we was fab is a lot of fun with some fun I am the walrus references throughout. And of course you got the closer got my mind set on you. I actually would probably put it up higher on the album if I was doing the track listing. It's not quite a goldfish for me to be honest, but I do think it's better than a spotted fish, so I'm gonna create a new category. Let's call it a pretzel fish. Not quite as good as goldfish, but still a tasty salty snack. Thanks, Todd. Since the video's rating comes down to me, and since this is one of my favorite George albums, Cloud9 gets a goldfish. That's what it takes as the essential track for me personally. I think that the standout track has to be Got My Mindset On You. It's such a classic song. For me too, but I also love Cloud9. Definitely in my top three. I'd put This Is Love up there too. Agreed. And of course you gotta include the Beatle throwback, When We Was Fab. You know, sad as it is to say, I'm almost glad that George never made another album in his lifetime because Cloud9 is actually a really solid album to go out on. But we do have one more album that we have to go through. You have fun with that, and I have to get back to work. Oh, that's the pizza delivery guy. Gotta go decontaminate him. He is in for a real treat. Okay, that's one pizza with extra cheese and pineapple. Ah! Oh my god, my face! My beautiful face! Anyway, uh, join me in the next video. We're gonna take a little detour and talk about the Traveling Wilbury albums. <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to that one too. Oh, uh, uh, oh, hey, did you hear that they're having a, a special screening on, um, uh, 80s anime channel 37? It's, uh, uh, robot, schoolgirl, strawberries, number 12? Robot, schoolgirl, strawberries, number 12? I only thought they made 11 of them. This is news to me. Thanks, buddy. Woo! I can't believe that worked. Well, while we're at it, what's your favorite song from Cloud9? Comment below, and I'll see you next time.